Good morning everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, today I'm just going to talk about um, a bit of a hot topic, uh, weight loss. Basically your diet when it comes to weight loss. And I know there are so many experts on this or everyone's an expert on this. Um, but I'd just like to share my own experience and my own findings and what my own research has, has helped me understand over the years. I know that it would be easy to dismiss advice from certain people if you don't believe they've struggled. And I understand this because um, there are some people whose genetics mean that they can pretty much eat whatever they want and they'll always be slim. Some people do have slow metabolism and some people do have fast metabolism. That is a thing. And ultimately, um, it's quite a stressful topic for a lot of people. We have um, certain comforts in life and food is one of those comforts definitely is for me food can be a treat a treat that helps us get through the day many people are addicted to food um, and it's not like you can kick that addiction because you have to eat <laughs> so and if you eat certain foods it's then hard to eat other foods because those other foods are tasteless or seem tasteless or unappealing. If I eat too much, then I put on weight and I put on weight, the type of weight that I would rather not put on. Perhaps the amount of weight that I've put on would be trivial in some people's view, um, but it certainly wasn't in mine. And um, I've had issues around food myself and, um, and I've struggled with diet when it comes to making me feel more comfortable within my own skin. And I know that most people can relate to that. This has led to me over the years trying out various diets. I've eaten low carb, um, I've eaten low fat, um, I've eaten low sugar. I tried for a while low saturated fat and low sugar. I've done intermittent fasting I have genuinely not eaten um, one to three days a week, um, as in completely starved myself on those days. This has at times led to quite unhealthy um, mental relationships with food. More than 99% of the time, and this is true, when someone says, I'm starting this diet right now, it flat out fails more than 99% of the time and if you don't think that's true just think really hard about it how many times you yourself have done that how many times other people you know how often truly do you see someone genuinely lose the amount of weight they wanted to lose it's so very rare and when somebody loses somebody who is overweight loses a significant amount of weight um, roughly three quarters of the time they put that back on once again, if you don't think that's true, think about everyone you know who've lost drastic weight. Normally, they slowly put it back on. And ultimately, you can't truly believe that if you need to make a huge change, um, that very small diet hacks will help you make that if the considerable majority of diets fail and the considerable majority of people fail at, at these diets. All of these diets, low fat, low carb, keto, paleo, intermittent fasting, all of these diets are just a way to get your body to use more energy than you take in or take in less energy than you use. The be all and end all of losing weight is to use more energy than you put into yourself. That really is it. And food is fuel. And, and it's very easy to think, oh, I went for a walk, I burned these calories. But you don't think that way about driving. You don't think that, oh, I burnt this fuel. Fuel works really well. It's fuel for a reason. So to burn off one M&M or one Smarty, um, you have to run roughly the length of a football pitch. Okay, to burn off a Mars bar, 
you have to run about two and a half to three miles. To burn off a really big roast dinner, you have to run about a half marathon. Of course, people that are different sizes and shapes and ages and have different metabolisms will respond differently and will have different results in terms of how, mu how many calories they burn. But hopefully that gives you an idea of the reality of burning energy. It's true that not all calories are created equal, um, but all in all, they are a measure of energy. Perhaps if you ate really clean foods, you could create an environment in your body where it burns a certain amount of calories more than it would if you ate um, other foods. Um, but it's, it's in the minimal hundreds maybe. In honesty, if you ate a day where you just ate really clean food um, and things like brown rice, um, broccoli, green beans, uh, peas, sweet corn, various other vegetables, lean proteins, and so on. If you just ate those things, then we're told the calories afterwards, and then on another day or another few days, you ate whatever you wanted, any like donuts, cakes, <laughs> chocolate, whatever you wanted, um, you'd be quite shocked at the difference in the amount of calories that you have. A bowl of, a, a heaped bowl of broccoli, like a really heaped bowl of broccoli, is something like maybe 250 calories. Whereas a, a really heaped bowl of Oreos it's about a thousand and a half or something like that it's a it's a lot of calories so as i said before i have tried many of these diets and sometimes they work for a little while um, i don't feel that any of them worked in the long term and low carb any low 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 carb or paleo or low fat essentially didn't work um, at all really because it was nearly impossible to eat out nearly impossible they just don't tend to make meals that way in restaurants and cafes um, and I can't express enough how bad I think low carb is as a diet approach. Lower carb maybe, um, but low carb as in foods that are very low in carbs. There's only a few proteins and specifically non-processed ones, um, some vegetables, some nuts and eggs and that's about it. And it's very hard to eat that way for a long time. Glucose is the body's most preferred energy source. It's the best energy source for your muscles and your brain. You can't ignore having a good varied diet with a good balance of carbohydrates and protein and fat. And also you can't really sustain a diet where you restrict on one of those macronutrients for any long period of time. All three of those show up a lot in a lot of foods. To get back to what I was saying, the reality is, which is hard to hear, um, if you really struggle with food and you really struggle with weight loss, a big change is what's required. Little bits of advice like to stop having sugar in your tea or to drink more water or skip this meal or whatever they tend not to work in the long term because you're doing something without paying a great deal of attention to it and hoping it has massive benefits they have small benefits for some people they might have larger benefits some people already have quite a fast metabolism and are only putting on weight because they're really overeating everyone can relate to this next part it's very hard when your mind is telling you that you want a snack and you want treats and it's and it's often in the evening or late at night and you just want to eat everything in the cupboards or eat all eat all the sweets or all the cookies or whatever it is and it's very hard and if you're in a position where you're about to where you have an option to go and eat more even if you're full but you want to you want the treat your mind is really powerful in that position and it's really hard to say no to it and if you say no i'm not having that everyone's been there no i'm not having that it takes a lot of willpower at the beginning of something motivation is a driver 
but it can't necessarily continue throughout. You need discipline. And discipline can be a really difficult thing and it often separates people when it comes to success. What I think people don't want to necessarily admit or truly believe is that a large change needs to happen, a complete change, um, a change in lifestyle, a change in diet completely, um, a new approach. It's very easy to, for marketing purposes, to play it down and to say, oh, you can still have all the things you want and lose weight. Because that is true, but you can still have all the things you want only to a certain extent. Those big chocolate bars that they sell in the shop, if you have a couple of squares, that's only a little bit of energy and your body can deal with that. That's very hard to do, and I think many people know this. If you have the whole thing, that's a lot of calories with only some nutritional value, and that's more calories than a, than a really quite large meal that would be a really whole food-filled meal that would keep you full for a while. I personally use an app phone that helps me track my calories to some it might seem excessive to me it might seem excessive I've definitely felt so before um, but if you're already trying one of these diets where you're constantly reading packets to see what's in this and what's in this and you're choosing only one meal off a menu so on and so forth um, you're actually going to the same length if not more and, and what actually keeping a track of my calories has helped me realize is that if I ate certain foods, it would be so easy to to over overindulge and overeat. And and if I ate certain things, so for me, flapjacks. You buy a flapjack from a store. It's usually about 400 calories. I could easily eat three of those from a store, and I wouldn't count it as one of the meals. And whereas now, when I cook, I like to make a large portion of the meal a, com a combination of vegetables. And then a fairly large portion of everything else too to be honest that meal itself um, is full of goodness and it fills me up and it's not as many calories by any stretch as a lot of the things that I would have eaten or a lot of the things that I can eat and sometimes still do discipline is a very difficult thing to maintain in any area People have New Year's resolutions and they are motivated. They are really motivated, but they don't have the discipline to see it through. And this is why most of the time people fail with these diets. It's good to have the motivation, but then put in some kind of plan where you'll succeed and get some discipline. Get some discipline. It's so easy to say. And as I say it, the words sound like I'm trivializing it. I'm, I'm not. It's very hard. It's very hard. And if you succeed at it, you should be very proud because it takes a very strong mind to be disciplined in the absence of motivation. It takes a very strong mind to be disciplined and stay disciplined in the absence of motivation. You have to find something that's sustainable. And the only way that something can be sustainable is if it's an entire life choice, is if it's a change that you know will last, not one that you just believe will last. When you're about to try a diet or try something new, think about the motivation that's going on inside you, inside your mind. Think about that and try and connect with it and recognize that right now I'm motivated. Right now I have motivation. Acknowledge it, be aware of it, notice what it is and tell yourself and understand that it's not going to last because it's motivation, which is a temporary thing. And understand that this needs to be the driver of what now happens, not the thing that you can just rely on. Motivation can be really reassuring in the moment because it feels like, oh, now I have the answer. When the motivation is gone, if you felt that was the answer, then the answer is gone. If you felt that it was the strategy, then the strategy is gone. And the discipline is what will truly be needed in helping you achieve it. final part of this video I want to address um, how you feel about your body your body is your body and think about how many people that you love and respect um, and look up to and admire that are potentially overweight and it, 
doesn't change the way you feel about them. We're surrounded by things like magazines and Instagram and adverts and movies, things that are designed to make us feel like we have to be a certain way. When they have a, a shirtless scene that's famous in a movie, um, Hugh Jackman in Wolverine, Daniel Craig in James Bond, these people prepare, admittedly prepare for those shirtless scenes. Hugh Jackman for a scene in Wolverine um, dehydrated himself and didn't eat for a couple of days before the scene. And we see these scenes as a way that we want to look anyway. These people on Instagram and, and adverts and so on, they, they are showing an image that they know is an image that, that you want to, that you desire. And even they desire it. There are times where they're bloated and ill and it's coming out of both ends and they don't feel good about themselves. They don't take pictures of those times. And there are times where you yourself potentially, you look in the mirror and maybe you can talk your body into a way which makes you feel good about yourself. Well, take that and then have it airbrushed and have a filter thrown on it and then have it shared to the world. And then you know that you know in yourself that that's not how you look all the time. That's not how they look all the time. That's not how human beings are supposed to look all the time. The main goal of it all is to feel better about yourself and feel more comfortable in your own skin. But you have to accept and, and appreciate who you are in the first place. Primarily, what's most important is your health. It's not that you look beach body ready. Um, it's okay if you wanna look beach body ready, but it's best to understand what that means and have an appreciation for yourself beneath that. Enjoy the journey and don't beat yourself up along the way. Thanks very much for watching.